When I say that this is the hands down best movie I've seen all year, I'm not making that up. I think this movie sets an absolute benchmark for what to expect, not only out of just human stories for drama films, as well as monster films going forward. I'm, I cannot describe to you how great Godzilla minus one is. And this is coming from a person who hasn't seen an old school Toho Godzilla movie probably since Godzilla 1985. All right, I'm a Westerner, okay, born and raised West Coast. My experience with Godzilla the very first time was Godzilla 1985, and I remember crying at the end of that movie when they lured him into the volcano. I was very upset, I was not happy with that as a child. I mean, it scarred me. I remember watching it and sobbing. Who knew another Godzilla movie was going to do the same thing to me not when I was a child, not when I was under the age of 10, but no, being 41 years old and tearing up at a damn Godzilla movie. And this is a movie that I did break down in great length over for the patio commentary episode that is up. It's a long form, hour long conversation, but these are just my thoughts for people who don't want to sit through that. Godzilla minus one is a remarkable film. The thing I loved about it the most, and this is probably going to be what maybe uh, gets me in a little bit of hot water with some kaiju fans or some Toho fans out there is that when I think of this movie, I think of the human characters first, Godzilla second. I think of the idea of patriotism. I think of the idea of loving thy neighbor, of accepting loss and grief and processing those traumas. And then through those traumas, rising, rising to find family, new family. Because our life is not just one that is one that we have our own family, right? We have our friends. We have the family that we choose as well as the family that we're born into. This movie has a lot to do with finding oneself again after atrocities had happened. Now, obviously, it's a Godzilla movie. So there is some pure Kino monster moments in this film. And it only had a budget of $15 million dollars. Uh, that's what they keep saying, at least. I'm not too sure how they did that. But the director of the film also wrote the movie, wrote the novelization that came out, as well as did uh, he oversaw the special effects for the film, keeping the budget low. And now we're hearing that this guy wants to do a sequel or a prequel to Godzilla Minus One. And I'm looking at Toho like, don't be a stupid bastard. Get out there, give them the money, give them a higher budget, give them 30 million, 40 million, a hundred million dollars, then get out of the way and let this man cook. The story of a failed kamikaze pilot who survives an encounter with Godzilla only to watch everyone else on the island except or at the base for one guy get killed. Then to have the survivor's guilt of that going home, finding his family home half destroyed his neighbor drunk with rage against him because she's mad at the Japanese government. She's mad at the American. She's mad at everybody that she lost her kids, but because he failed to do his duty, she is super mad at him. But then through the process of everything, he comes across a young woman and what appears to be her child until we discovered that no, it's not her child. It was another woman's child. And that woman died in air raids. And this woman, Noriko, Noriko to pronounce it correctly, opted to look after her as a promise to this dying mother. And again, pulls at your heartstrings, pulls at your heartstrings. Here comes a couple of years later. They're basically a family, his, but his survivor's guilt is still so bad that he refuses to acknowledge it, even going as far as to telling little Akiko, I'm not your father, in a moment that like really makes you not like Koichi. You know, like you're, you're not really meant to like him till the end of the movie, all things considered, but really it's like, you can understand his anger, his frustration at the world. You can understand everything that he's going through. But when he purposefully chooses to be a dick to like a two-year-old child that looks at him as her father, it's one of those moments where you as the audience are like, you son of a bitch, like stop it. But then in the moment too late, Noriko gets taken out in a blast. He, of course, feels survivor's guilt over that because she pushed him out of the way. Of course, Godzilla's atomic blast is also an atomic bomb in this particular situation, which is freaking amazing. And then the Japanese civilians realizing that the Japanese government is not going to waste any more resources on trying to fight Godzilla. They come together to stop him themselves, but they do it 
not for heroism. They do it not for any kind of to the victor go the spoils. They do it because they are now needing to stand up and fight for themselves in a way that the Japanese government used them as cannon fodder so often during World War II. These are the survivors that are now like, we have to fight for ourselves. We have to fight for what we love. We have to fight for our country and our family. And they need to win a war. And this is their war. And it's such an interesting and engaging and emotionally like massive movie to watch because you're watching this and you can just feel everyone, their frustration, their anger, their despair. You can feel like you're there with them on this adventure to stop this gigantic monster that is raging its way through Ginza. And then, of course, they all come together at the very end and they all try to sink him to the bottom of the ocean, which seems kind of fairly weird considering that he's from the deep. But whatever, you know, still pretty cool nonetheless. And then he gets blown to shit. And that's always a lot of fun. Uh, and then, you know, but when he died, I cared more about whether or not Koichi had survived rather than whether or not Godzilla was going to die. I knew Godzilla was going to quote unquote die because Godzilla quote unquote dies in every Godzilla movie. This is just par for the course. It's like, we know it, but he'll always find a way to come back. So it's like, even though you're like, okay, cool, he's gone. The terrifying lizard monster man in a mocap suit is gone. But what about the humans? Because at this point, at least in the movie, I'd become so emotionally attached to the humans that I thought to myself, like, I just want to see what is going to happen. Like, I just want him to live. I want him to have a happy ending. Because I feel like he'd gone through so much and he had, he had been through so much. He really wanted that happy ending and he got it. But then of course there is the possibility of a sequel involving Noriko and what happened to her uh, when she was struck by the atomic blast and how she survived. And I think that might be what they maybe go for. I kind of hope they don't do it. Leave it as it is. You know, I know I said, let the man cook, let Yamazaki cook. And, and, and if he's going to do it, let him do it. But it's just like the movie's so perfect in and of itself the movie is such a masterpiece in and of itself that it doesn't need to be touched. It doesn't need to be added upon. It doesn't need anything. This is the modern Jaws for, you know, kaiju fans or, or, or for people who just want to see something that's terrifying in the water. And believe me, the amount of work they did on the CG for Godzilla, especially when he's in the water and you see his eyes, that is legitimately terrifying. That is legitimately freaky. But you have that on top of amazing characters, characters you care about, character is that you, you see grow over the movie. There's a great development and you're just sucked into that world. And you almost don't want to leave because it becomes comfy by the end. You just like all these people and you just want to spend more time with them. That's a rarity in movies nowadays. It really is a rarity. This is a piece of art. This is not a piece of content. This movie is a masterpiece and it deserves to be seen in a big theater or at least on a big screen TV. The movie has a limited release here in the States, but I think it's doing pretty well and they might expand it. And I'm not going to be the only one telling you that it's a masterpiece, but I really hope that if you like this, check out the patio commentary episode here on the channel. Give it a listen. I go for further in depth. Want to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions until then. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you again for watching and peace out.